So my approach is that, you know, let's let's teach physics using games. Let's let's make let's make video games with realistic physics in it, but have the students actually put the physics inside of the game to show that really all that's going on is just F equals M A. All that's going on is is kinetic energy. All that's going on is is just the simple forces of physics acting on different objects. So most of the time when you teach physics you have these sort of interactive examples that the students use, maybe it's on a computer, a web browser, or something like that, and the students can get a feel for the physics that are that's in these examples. Maybe it's a projectile flowing through the air, maybe it's Angry Birds, something like that, uh, and, and that's how, that's part of how the, the physics is supposed to be communicated. So my approach is, you know, the the actual code behind those interactive examples is really not that complicated. And so why not show the student that exactly the same kind of physics we're discussing in class, or the equations we're discussing in class, you can pretty simply put that into a computer program and have all these sorts of fun interactivity, uh, just as another way of illustrating the ideas and showing them what the basis for accurate physics in that environment. But I looked at what other people are doing, and I just didn't like it very much. Um, I, I looked at what they're doing, and I, and I said to myself, this is too complicated. Uh, this is not, it didn't have a game-like feel to it. For me, I'm a visual learner. I have to be able to see what's going on, why things work the way they work. Being able to see that on a screen as to, okay, that works because of this. Yeah, it does um, help see, by using the concepts, you'll be able to figure out what each one does in an actual application when you're using well, it. The first thing we do when we teach physics, we say, you know, forget about gravity. Let's just imagine you're in free space, and you apply a force, and you accelerate at a certain rate when you apply a certain force, and that's it. So the natural habitat of physics is just free space, no sources of gravity. Uh, so I said to myself, what video game is free space, no gravity? Asteroids, of course, right? First thing that the student programs, and then they literally change two lines of code, and the next thing you know, there, there's gravity there, they're trying to land on the surface of the moon, you've got lunar lander, okay? And then you change a few more lines of code, you've got angry birds, because you already have gravity in there, all you gotta do is have some initial speed. And so it's, it's, it's not just that I chose three random games that was sort of related to physics. There's there's a logic to it uh, that hopefully the student can appreciate. So with Angry Birds, the they have to draw the trajectory of of the bird uh, before they fire the bird. And so this it's really fun because you know, in their homework assignments, they'll have to calculate. Oh well, this projectile is going to be in the air for two point. You know, how many seconds? Two point five seconds. Uh, whereas with this computer program, you know, they, on the fly, depending on what direction the bird is pointing and about to be released, they have to figure out the precise trajectory. And it's pretty fun because it, that trajectory changes depending on whether, which direction you point the bird. Um, and so that's the, exactly the kind of thing I'm supposed to be doing in physics, but now I can do it in a game-like environment. And so in our everyday lives, we don't see the vectors in everyday lives, and so what I'm trying to do is take what I see when a ball is thrown across the courtyard and putting that into something that the students can, can tangibly see what's in my mind.